Okay, last ship, um, season five, episode nine. This is the uh, series penultimate. This mostly comes into um, like a chess game at this point. The writers are just getting everyone into position for the big battle that is to come. Uh, which means our boy Miller is left behind because, as we know, he's injured and his legs were amputated. So he's left behind to sort of cheer on the silent exit of the Nathan James as it goes to invade Colombia, which is Tavos's country. This is an all-or-nothing gambit. If they manage to pull this off, the United States will be successful and Tavos will be defeated. That's a lot to risk on basically two ships, which is the Nathan James and the USS Michener, named after the former um, president. So, we do know um, that where the uh, ship was to land uh, doesn't exactly work out. There's a lot of comparison in this episode. The characters keep talking about um, World War II and D-Day. Um, which we consider to be um, a righteous war, as we know what led up to to World War II, right? So this is what this is about. Um, the, once again, they're justifying the U.S. invasion into Colombia. This proves to be difficult for me because the reason why South America is pushing back is because the U.S. has never respected South America. It's seen it as its little sphere of influence to install puppet dictators, manipulate economies, start drug wars, the whole nine yards. Every reason the South Americans have for you attacking the United States is 10,000% valid. But this is obviously not a position that a show like The Last Ship can take because The Last Ship is about promoting American goodness, American might, and it's all embodied in Tom Chandler, who essentially represents the United States. I continue to have great difficulty with this is I'm watching the analogy to World War II because this is nothing like that. This is absolutely nothing like that. And it's only if you're an unthinking person with um, zero awareness of history can you possibly buy into this into this propaganda and, and pure nonsense. Even for fiction, this is just beyond nonsense. So anyway, because this is war, we can't get out of this without any kind of casualties. I have to admit, last ship sort of set me up this time. Um, the person who died was not who I thought was going to die. You know, Danny tells Kara how this is his last mission, and when it's done, he, you know, he's stepping away from the military. He's going to settle down with um, her if she'll have him. So I thought this is obvious manipulation to make his death seem um, deeper. Now, you can't blame me for thinking that. The Last Ship isn't exactly the deepest show on television. But it turns out it's Baby Burke who dies. And he's killed by um, a young boy with like a harpoon forcing Danny to kill the boy. This is very troubling for Danny because the boy that he ends up killing isn't much older than his own son. This adds a shade of sadness to the coming of invasion. Because they've already lost someone who's very, very important to the ship. And then we have Tom. Tom, who's still in full Ahab mode, thinking that he hears things um, that he clearly doesn't hear. Except this time, someone is looking into it and someone is wondering. Tom is clearly not firing on all cylinders. And while they see something is off with their captain, no one really says anything yet. And then we have Tavos in Colombia, who's, of course, Tom's counter and the supposed unstable one. His generals are legitimately uh, conspiring to to have a coup. And to this I say, what took them so long? Seriously, after all the missteps Tavos took because of his obsession with Tom Chandler, which really came out of nowhere anyway, why is Tavos obsessed with Tom Chandler? They've never bothered to explain that. Um, his generals decide that it's time for Tavos to go. Uh, the only reason for it to take this long or for the generals to decide to to do this is, of course, they have to drag this shit out. Unfortunately for the generals, tarot cards reveal their plot. And all of them, one after another, end up dead. Okay, so can we just 
talk about like the mysticism now of brown people. Um, I, I don't like the way that this is being used. Yeah, okay, the tarot cards were right, but it, it it treats it treats it just like it's hocus pocus, and it's really uncomfortable, um, uncomfortable t- to watch, quite frankly. But it works in Tavos's favor, and he's able to take out all of his generals. This means that there are no longer any adults at Tavos's table. There's no one to tell him. Um, about military strategy. There's no one to try to hold him back from his worst impulses. And this, of course, is happening at a time when we know the series finale is about to come. There's also no one left to stand between Tavos and Tom, should it really get that far. There's a part of me that sort of wonders whether or not this is not some big PTSD sort of bad dream Tom is happening, having at this point, you know? Um, because his opponent is so illogical and, and Tom has played, I mean, I know this man has played hero a lot, but Lord, this season, oof, you know, you can jump out of, be exploded in a plane and then cauterize your own wound and survive it all. Cause Tom Chandler, it's all getting to be a bit much. And it's making me wonder, is, is this reality for Tom? Is this some kind of fever dream he's having? Is this really going on? I guess we're going to have to find out. The series finale is is coming up. And I'm going to be kind of glad to put this all to bed after five long years. Um, Enough with the American propaganda. Let's hope that they can sell this ending, make all of this militarism, all of this hyper-masculinity, all of this brown people are bad, all of this ahistorical representation for South America, erasing legitimate South American grievances. Let's see if they can make it all worth it. Let's see if they can sell it and make it somewhat believable, at least a little less nauseating than they have done so far this season. We'll see.